the Adelsons, as this morning we're bringing you the key moments from the jail calls. In this portion, you'll hear Charlie speaking to his parents on the day of his murder conviction. They put me in because they maybe get me in some protective, it's called protective management, where people are like, that I guess have high profile cases or people that are like police officers, can they go into custody? They, they put them in certain areas, but they, they can't put them in general population. I've heard of camps that like that. I don't think I'm in shock. He said they're, they're going to work on that. They're going to work on the appeal. Right. I mean, it's such a high profile, you know, it's like, I think it's a talent lawyer. It's, uh, it's such a high profile case that, I mean, it was, Plenty of warnings. I'm sure they should have followed their little instructions. Oh, I'm sure they did. Yeah. So they they were, were, listen, these are people who took Apple and these are all people from Tallahassee. There's no way that they, there's, there's no way they can a rock. There's no way you don't know about this case. You know, this is the biggest, this is like the I know. I know what they're 
Oh, how dare they, how dare they prosecute Charlie Adelson, right? Let me bring in my guest to talk about this. I have with me retired NYPD Detective Angel Masonette and attorney Michelle Thomas. Great to see you both this morning. I, Angel, it's been so long since we've seen you. Thank you for coming back on the program. Uh, I want to start with you. Uh, we've missed you so much and it's been uh, several months. So uh, talk to me. What do you think about Charlie? Is, is he just uh, delusional? Uh, that he thinks this was all about uh, the prosecutors and and the, the publicity that that's what got him convicted. Yeah, I mean he, he seems very uh, um, narcissistic, right? And he's also not uh, he's also not talking about his innocence. He's also not saying like I can't believe I'm in here. I can't believe they're doing this to me. I didn't do this thing. So um, yeah, he, he just seems pretty delusional, and you know he's making it about everybody else except you know. Uh, rather than take accountability for what he did and you know, mm -hmm. what he was convicted for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think the Adelsons thought they were untouchable. Uh, Michelle, I want your reaction next, please, on this one. Uh, we hear Charlie, this is right after the verdict, um, and he's talking about taking an appeal, all of that. What's going through your head, you know, knowing the legal process, how it goes, and hearing it from his vantage point about what he thinks is coming next for him? Right, you know, it's like he's still trying to pl play to the public eye. It's he's a perpetual victim. He's trying to garner sympathy. He is very much well aware that these calls are being recorded, and so he is, I think, hoping that these calls get released so that he can become this sympathetic person and in the hopes of trying to bolster his appeals. But there is a bit of delusion there, or like my colleague said, uh, narcissism, because he doesn't believe that he could have possibly been convicted for anything that he's done. Because to Charlie, he does. There's no wrong. So that's the way I, I, I hear his his recordings. Exactly, Michelle. I, I know uh, many of our fellow courties are with you. I'm with you. Uh, I, I really haven't seen much at all. Maybe a couple people on social media who are like, oh, don't think there was Adelson involvement. <laughs> like, are you paying attention to the case? Uh, let's play another clip. Uh, this is another one of those calls. This is from November the 6th. Charlie on the phone with uh, Donna and Harvey. It's like everybody who walks in has their own agenda or, you know, or a bone to pick or a tail to spin. And everything just gets taken as like face value. Like I just, I, I, I feel like a fool for breathing, thinking or letting people convince me that I was going to, that I was going to have a shot. I really, really feel stupid. Mm. Angel Masonette, let me go back to you on this. Uh, he's talking about going to trial here. Uh, you know, and we know he took the stand, he testified. Uh, in one of the jail calls I was listening to yesterday, he says, I did an awesome job testifying. Uh, and now he's talking about feeling stupid, like feeling foolish. Uh, tell me what you think may be going on with him, please. I think he's trying to, uh, so he's, he's trying to get this impression uh, that he's being hoodwinked, right? That he's been hoodwinked. and. Uh, that he's usually the smartest guy in the room, right? And now all of a sudden, you know, he he's, was he was convicted and, and he's being accused of this crime and he's going to be sentenced. And, um, you know, he's trying to play the victim here when he clearly is not the victim, right? We all know who the victim uh, is or was. So, um, you know, again, it, it goes back to his narcissism. It goes back to his, you know, how dare they put me in here? How dare they lock me up? How dare they uh, accuse me of this stuff? Exactly. Uh, Detective Angel Masonette, Attorney Michelle Thomas, so glad you both are on the show. Stand by. If you would, please, we have more calls to listen to. We just have to hit a break. But when we come back, the now convicted killer takes his frustration out on the lead prosecutor. Wait till you hear the next call. Tonight on Court TV. These are the big cases that everyone is talking about. A lot of new developments taking place. Shocking. I know who killed John Bonet, to say the least. You cannot make this stuff up. It's uh, unreal. The scene of the double murders is behind us right here. Things are happening. The investigation is continuing. Closing arguments with Vinny Politan tonight at 8, 7 central, only on Port TV. Trust me, it is. I, I, it was yours, like, and I, 
Yeah, good jurors, that's what he was dealing with. Welcome back to Court TV Live. I'm Julie Grant. And during this hour of the show, we're bringing you those jailhouse phone calls between Charlie and Donna Adelson. And this next portion was recorded right after Charlie was found guilty of Danny Markell's murder. But remember, this call is prior to Donna's arrest, so keep that in mind. Here, you're going to hear he's mad at Georgia Kappelman, the lead prosecutor. I was like... Just feeling great, thinking like everything is like everything is going as good as you could have hoped, like, absolutely as good as you could have hoped. Like Capital they got to the point that she wanted to ask me where, uh, what, how old is, what, what does three do for Dave, and how old is she? Like why are you asking me her, her occupation and, and her age, like? Because she had nothing to talk about. <laughs> because you know that she's his nanny, and you're about to make me look bad. So instead, I said, well, Bree went to college, and then after she graduated college, she worked for Dave, and she was 24, and I was 39, and that's the mother of my child. Like, I shut her up. Like, she didn't have anything to say about, you know, how old is, you know, she, she, was, she was hoping that it was going to be, oh, yeah, she's a nanny, and she's 17. And she had another Georgia Capitol moment. Whoa! Did you get in trouble? No. No, I can tell she was actually 25, not 24, but like, I mean, it, it was like, it was, you know, I felt, I felt when I was honestly, mom, I felt when I was on the stand and she asked me, what does Bree do for Dave and how old is she? <laughs> I was like, you have nothing else to ask me. I know. You, you've run out of questions. I mean, Mom, I, I've never in my life gone from one extreme of emotion to that, like this. I've never no. come close. No. 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 We were all on a high. After you testified, we were all on a high. Yeah. And Bree is right. I mean, all these messages came in positively. They couldn't believe how... Miles called up. He couldn't wait oh. to tell us. He said, he's totally innocent. Totally innocent. And his, his son-in-law, who's a lawyer, called. He is totally innocent. He yeah. said he's getting off because they have absolutely nothing. I mean, this is from intelligent people. That's my problem. Yeah. That's the problem. Yeah. That's, the, that's the catch. That's the jury of my peers. The jury of my peers was not there. There was one juror, number 15, that he would have said he's a juror of your peers. He knows that if you're going to find a guy guilty of first-degree murder, you better be so sure you know what happened. You better be really, 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 really sure you know what happened. But they, they just had Georgia going, listen, if you, if you use your common sense and you, you see what's going on here, all this code talk, just, you know what guilty is. If you feel he's guilty, vote guilty. Like, that's like saying, like I said before, like you think the Kansas City Chiefs will beat the Dolphins. I mean, that may be your feeling, but you sure aren't going to bet more than, you know, you're not going to say I'm 90% sure, 95% sure, 99% sure. Like, that's the realm that you have to be. You're going to take somebody's right. life. Hello, this is a prepaid collect call from Charlie, an incarcerated individual at the Leon County Jail. This call is not private. To accept charges and consent to this recorded call, press 1. Thank you for using Securus. You may start the conversation now. Yeah, I don't know why I'm doing that. No, it's just, I had so much hope. And like, the crazy thing is, is that I really wasn't getting that excited until this past weekend. And then after the you know, you had Thursday, Friday, but the week before, then you had this whole week, I mean, last whole week, and then I had the ad that went to the attorney testified on Friday, actually, uh, maybe Thursday. And no, it was all day Thursday. Uh, she was Friday. 
Friday morning. You know, I sat up there and testified from Thursday at 8.45 to 5.45 at night. I come back and put me on the stand for another hour Friday morning. And Kesselman had me for another two hours. Two hours. I'm like, oh, two hours. I'm like, okay. You full on questioning, ask me anything. It, it doesn't come down to that. Like, like, and Dan said to me, he said, if I were to give you a score, I think you'd, you'd get a 95. He said, he said he was very happy with, with how I testified. You know, my, my demeanor, my delivery, how I was like to the point that like, that, you know, elaborated on some stuff, it was personal, like, he was like, he came across fantastic. Everybody, Bree was telling me, like, reading to me, saying that people were finally writing online about, like, positive things. Like, finally, people are writing positive things about the case. Yeah. And, and, uh, and I was literally, like, I was on cloud nine over the weekend. I was like, I'm going to see my son, I'm going to get out, I'm going to go to see Scott, I'm going to go there, I'm going to have these plans over there, I'm going to have these plans, I'm going to enjoy my time with my dog, I can't wait to be on my boat, I can't wait to see my son, I can't eat a plan on what restaurant I wanted to go to. Like, I would, I'd give away my food in the, on Sunday night because I'm thinking, like, okay, like, they're not going to let me go from the courthouse. Like I'm giving, I'm giving away all my food to two guys and a and I'm like, I'm feeling good. Like I, I, didn't, I was so sure that I was going home that like I didn't want, I didn't want to have people just pick my food. I'd probably give it to the two guys I'm friends with. So they gave me two packets of sandwich back, and once I go back to the pod, they'll give me some of the food back. And just they just walk me through the pod, and I'm like, go get me some tuna fish. They went up and got them. So. But I was like, you know, like, no, I thought, I, I was like 90-something percent. You were, people said he has an answer for everything because it's the truth, okay? Then they said, I believe him. He was definitely not part of this killing. Another one. Yeah, no. it made her look absolutely desperate several times with incredible reaches like, quote, you're untouchable, right? She had to go to those kinds of traps because they have nothing substantial. He will walk. You may think he's guilty, but they haven't been close to proving it. And another one, if I were on that jury, there's no way I could say 100% he's guilty. The next girl <laughs> is totally unbelievable. She was shown to be such a liar. I mean, on and on and on and on. That's where we're different, Donna. I could say 100% guilty if I were on that jury with Charlie.